Today, I want to talk about code interviews and maybe why you shouldn't spend a lot of energy preparing for them. Welcome back, folks. I'm sorry about my voice. I just had a bout with COVID. It actually hit me quite a bit harder than I expected. I'm definitely still recovering, but just grateful that I'm feeling better and I'm well enough to record, so why not? Let's make a video. Also, just want to say thank you to all of you who support this channel, who subscribe, who support the channel on Patreon, where you can get source code access and access to my virtual office hours. Also, those that buy merch. There are a lot of ways to support the channel, and I couldn't do what I do without your help. So a big thanks for helping to keep this channel moving in the right direction. But now, back to the lecture at hand, there is a whole lot of energy being put onto the internet about coding interviews. There's books, there's blogs, there's all sorts of different tools to help you hack, beat, or crush those coding interviews. And today I want to talk about it. Now, of course, as always, this is definitely my opinion. Feel free to disagree. I'm sure a lot of you will disagree and you'll let me know down in the comments how you agree or disagree. I appreciate that. Usually I appreciate that. Most of the comments are really helpful. But anyway, these are my opinions. My opinions could change. Also, maybe based on your comment. But anyway, I wanted to look at where all this advice comes from. Why, why are people talking about coding interviews? What's the big deal? Now, I think this is coming from a lot of fear and stress and it's valid. I, mean, I remember my first coding interview. I didn't have a lot on my resume. I didn't have a lot of experience to speak from. I didn't have a lot of connections, people that could vouch for me and my programming abilities. And there were a lot of nerves. And of course there still are. I mean, anytime we're interviewing, anytime you're doing an interview, there's going to be some nerves. Now, of course, I know some of you may suffer from more significant anxiety when it comes to interviews. You may have significant social anxiety or interview anxiety. And if that's the case, this is, I'm not actually addressing that head on. If that's the case, you might want to address that directly. And so this advice may not apply if you have significant social anxiety and that factors into some of the challenges. In that case, yeah, there may be some prep work you want to do just to deal with the anxiety and try to figure out how to get, keep your nerves down. But for those that aren't dealing with extreme social anxiety, there are several reasons why I think you should stop focusing so much on the interview. The first is that coding interviews are kinda out of style. Maybe that's too strong of a term. They're changing, they've evolved. I mean, people definitely still do code interviews, but they're not the same as they were when I was first doing them. I mean, I remember back when I was in my 20s, it seemed like every interview you went to, there was some crazy coding question, some logic puzzle, some, I mean, just like really crazy stuff that was being thrown all over the place. Those interviews are actually the source for a lot of the logic puzzles that I'm familiar with. And also I got asked about all sorts of really crazy computing topics that ended up being totally irrelevant to the work that I was going to do for that company. And of course, I understand where those interviewers were coming from. They were trying to find the best question that would help them identify the next super coder. But over the years, we've sort of come to realize that these super high stress questions and high stress interviewing environments don't actually correlate really well with what we really care about. And that is like, I really, when I interview somebody, I want to know, are they going to be the best team member? Are they going to be great for the culture? Are they going to be a good employee? Are they going to be able to build the tools, software, the hardware that I actually actually need. And it turns out that a really high stress situation involving a crazy logic puzzle isn't really a good way to figure that out. Now, of course, every hiring manager is going to be different. Some people really do get into the whole power trip thing about watching other people squirm. I don't recommend working for those people. I don't like the cultures they create. I wouldn't work for them myself. And I also don't want to give you the wrong idea. Like I've figured this all out. I'm still trying to figure out the best ways to identify the best people for my teams. I'm still varying the questions that I ask in interviews. And I'm looking forward to seeing your suggestions down in the comments maybe you'll help me become a better interviewer. But today when I interview people, I do try to take the stress level down. I try to remove as much social anxiety, as much anxiety and nervousness as I can. I try to reduce the stakes a little bit, even though, I mean, I know they're nervous. And I still do ask technical questions because we do technical work. I mean, we're a technical team. But my questions are trying to get at how do they function? How do they operate in a group? What kind of work do they do? How do they approach solving problems? And how do they think? I try to ask a lot of different questions and I try to make it clear that none of the questions are high stakes gotcha questions that are like just really out there to, to bust people like getting one answer wrong or getting you know a bad answer isn't likely to kill your chances in this interview and this all may seem a little vague so let's look at some specific questions that i might ask in an interview so the first kind of question that i might ask is what i call a fundamentals question so this is going to be a basic technical question dealing with basic software or hardware functionality and and maybe it involves something like write me a function that does something simple copies one array to another or computes the average of the 
even elements of the array or something really simple, something really basic that I expect just about everyone to be able to do, but I just want to make sure that someone is comfortable enough with programming and programming languages that we get that out of the way. So these questions are not meant to be stressful. I avoid obscure features. I try to avoid language specific. Sometimes I even avoid specific languages. I just try to ask questions that are more general. So if they have a strong foundation in a set of languages, it should be fine. They can pick the language that they choose. The point of these questions is that if they've got good foundations, these questions should not be stressful. They should be fine. They should be just mostly a way for us to communicate and them to demonstrate that they're comfortable. So the second kind of question that shows up occasionally, and this is actually one that I don't really like, is the logic puzzle. I avoid these myself. I think they're stressful, and I don't know that they really tell me much about how you develop software or hardware. They tell me a little bit about how clever you are and how well you think and maybe how well you are at approaching different problems. But a lot of these questions, a lot of these logic puzzles are really trick questions. They're gotcha questions. They've got some kind of vagaries in them where you have to clarify something. Maybe they're trying to see if you're detail oriented and you clarify stuff. Sometimes there's also a trick in there, something subtle about the scenario that makes one option not make sense. And that's fine too. They're basically riddles. And like I said, I avoid these. If you get one, do your best. All I want to say about them is if you do get logic puzzles in an interview and the interviewer seems really smug or seems like they're enjoying your pain and suffering too much, that may be a red flag that you don't want to work for that company. You don't want to work for that person. But otherwise, best of luck. So the third type of question I want to mention is the question you can't answer. Now, sometimes in an interview, I will ask a candidate a question that I'm confident that they don't know the answer to. I'll find something obscure in my particular niche that I just don't think anybody else really worries about. Most of the time, I'm right. And I try to ask it in a low stress way. I don't want them to panic or anything. I'm just, you know, hey, what do you, do you have any experience with this? Do you have any, have you had any opportunities to look at this particular topic? And do you have an opinion about some feature or something, whatever? I expect expect them to not be able to answer this question. And the reason is really I'm trying to see how they handle situations where they don't know the answer. I want to see how comfortable they are with admitting that they don't know something, that they haven't seen something, that they don't know the answer, that they're going to need to go do some homework to look something up. For me, this is a big one because I see a lot of people that I have worked with in the past who try to BS their way through situations. They don't want to admit. Ego gets the best of them and they don't want to admit that they don't understand something, that they don't know how to do something and they don't ask for help. And this wastes a ton of time. Time. A ton of resources costs us a lot of time and effort and a lot of headaches, and I try to avoid it at all costs. So this is definitely a question that I will ask in interviews. And of course, there are other kinds of interview questions. For example, there are scenario questions. Here's a scenario. How would you handle it? There are also homework questions. I often give homework questions. I really like homework questions because they reduce the stress. Basically, I give someone maybe some hardware or a software tool or something and a small challenge. Nothing crazy, nothing hard. I just want to see how they work, and I want to see how productive they are, and I want to see what kind kind of results come back. I personally like this one because I think it's lower stress. It, it's They don't have to do it while I'm just sitting there watching them. This takes some of the nerves down and I think it mimics more how real work happens. Like I'm not going to sit there and watch someone work all the time. They're going to do it on their own time and what's going to matter to me is what kind of work comes back. Okay, so that's a little bit about the different questions that you might see, questions even that I might ask and some of you are wondering, hey wait, but you just at the beginning you told us not to study for interviews but it sounds like you're prepping us for interviews. And yeah, I did say at the beginning of the video that you should shouldn't spend a lot of time and effort prepping for code interviews. I stand by that. Because I think that there's something you can do that's much, much better. And that is don't prepare for the interview, prepare for the job, prepare for your career, prepare for the kind of work you want to do. Because the interview people, the interview is not the point. The job is the point. I mean, I know you want to get a job. You're like, yeah, and I have to interview to get a job. But a good interview might be able to land a job, but can someone that spent all their time focusing on interviews and like tricking an interviewer and thinking they're brilliant, can that person hold down a job? Are they going to have a great career. I can tell you I've seen people who interview really well and they get themselves in the door and that's great and then they can't keep the job because they don't actually have a really good foundation. They don't have really good skills. They can't do the work and everyone's disappointed. Everyone's wasted a lot of time and energy. But on the other hand, if you prepare for the work, if you prepare for the career and you build yourself a really strong foundation, then the interview shouldn't be a problem. Seriously, think about it. The fundamentals question, no problem. You're not going to have any problem with that because your fundamentals are going to be strong. You know how to write functions, classes, 
kids, you've got a bunch of languages under your belt, you're in good shape because you focused on the day-to-day -day things that matter in this line of work, the small things that are gonna make a big difference in your productivity and your effectiveness to the institution. And so those fundamental questions, not a problem. They're gonna be just like everything else you've done. They're gonna be routine. They're gonna be way less stressful. What about the homework questions? Again, no problem. This is just a part of the job. Ideally, a homework question is a micro task that might fall into any of your projects on that job. If it's well-designed, if you can do it, it's a good indication that you can do the job. So again, if you prepared for the kind of work that you wanna be doing, you should be prepared for that kind of question. If you run into the questions that you don't know the answer to, by all means, just say, I don't know. I think I could figure it out, or I've heard the term, but I'm not familiar with it. Whatever is honest for you, don't try to BS anybody. This is only gonna get you into trouble. You'll almost always get caught on it. And then of course, what about logic puzzles? Well, honestly, in my opinion, who cares about logic puzzles? All I would tell you about logic puzzles is look for clever tricks, things that are vague, they need clarification, look for some kind of catch in the way that things are described, fine. But seriously, just keep in mind that anyone who will not hire you because you didn't do well on a logic puzzle is probably not the boss you want, unless you're working for a company designing logic puzzles. And that's probably not a boss that I would want. I mean, seriously, if I went into a job interview tomorrow and somebody asked me a question about two glasses of water, one at 20 degrees Fahrenheit and one at 40 degrees Fahrenheit, asking me if I dropped a marble in each one, how high the water level will raise on each. I mean, people, my first response would be, really? Is this, this how we're going to spend our time together? And yeah, if they said yes, and they're all serious and they're like, no, this really matters to us, then I'd say, well, you know, the 20 degree glass is probably frozen, so the water level is not going to change at all. But as I walked away from that interview, I would think really strongly about whether or not this is a company that I want to work for, whether this is a manager that I want to work with. Maybe I I still do. Maybe I don't. I'm not telling you what to do with your life, but that's the thought that would go through my head. I'm not telling you what to do. If you want the job, take the job by all means. But my point today is that I think you'll get way more value, both career value, professional value, if you prepare for your career, if you prepare for the work you're going to be doing, you try to master your craft rather than trying to study for some interview, you know, tips and tricks and try to hack coding interviews. Just focus on the essentials of your career and the work you're going to be doing and let the interviews worry about themselves. So I hope that helps. I hope you learned something. I hope this inspires you. Subscribe to the channel so you don't miss my future videos. And until next week, I'll see you later.